guys, and welcome back. This is the episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta, number nine, The Peaches of, I think it's called Worth Wrath. Anyway, let's hurry up and go on and get into because y'all see got, got my, my little PJs on, my little teacup. It says wake cup. We got my little coffee cup on there. Y'all don't need to see all that because my boobs is huge. Anyway, moving on. Y'all. I thought at first, and I ain't even going to lie to you, that Portia was talking to somebody for real. I feel like Portia would do good. At, and uh, I think she said the play is a play, a part two or something, or two can play that game, whatever it is, three, four, whatever. I think she going to do good playing Cunning. I thought she was for real when she was talking. She did good. She done did some other plays. She did good. And she even Candy said she killed her play. She did good at it. So I think maybe Portia done found her calling. And um, I'm proud of Portia. Real talk. And to be honest, I'm proud of her. I hope she keep doing what she doing. Um, I'm sorry. Y'all got a new camera. You know how you get a new camera? You don't know how to focus it. Hold on. I don't ever buy no D. What's this DSLR camera? Just don't. I did better with my phone. This thing would just go blurry on you. And I'm used to I talk with my hands. Anyway, I'm sorry. Moving on. But she really being productive. She got her hair company. She doing play. She doing real well for herself. And I hope she keep doing it. Because everybody keep trying to drag her and put her down. And I want her to keep doing what she doing. Okay, so... um. Kim is on this episode. I like Kim and Sheree and Portia together. They're real fun. And um, I'm just going to say something. This is going to offend some people, but I just feel like it needs to be said. And this, what I'm saying is the truth. It don't matter if anybody want to admit that it's the truth, but it is what it is. And I'm going to say it. The whole point of me having this doing these reviews and these recaps and having the reactions or whatever is because I am going to speak my unbiased opinion and be as real as y'all with y'all as possible. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I watch Kim Zosiac show. Don't be tardy. I like Kim. I'm going to tell y'all the thing about Kim. Kim do the same thing the black ladies do. The only thing is because of her skin color, people want to judge her and be hard on it. Y'all stop tripping. I'm going to tell you to your face. Stop tripping. Kim just as dirty as everybody on that show. She just as dirty as Kenya. She been just as dirty as Nene. And she backstabbing just like everybody else on that show. All of them done done something dirty to each other. At some point. Nene done choked her and then lied to her face. Said she didn't choke her. They always doing stuff to each other. But when Kim do it, people want to be harder on Kim because of her skin color. Oh, I don't like Kim. In this, in this, because of her skin color, I don't give two, two shits that she white. I like her. I like her just the same and equal as I like all the other ladies. Stop being mean to Kim and how you don't like her because of that lady's skin color because she being dirty just like the black ladies. And it's because she's the only white lady on the show. Everybody want to holler that uh, they don't like her. But if she was on somewhere like New Jersey or Orange County where they all the same color, then people wouldn't be saying it. They would be watching and be like, oh, Kim, my favorite. So, yeah, whatever. I'm calling it like it is and it is what it is. And, and, and that's that. So, anyway, moving on. Did she say Candy offered to lick her box? I don't know if I believe that. At the same time, I do believe that because Candy done dropped the hint too many times that she liked to mess around and dibble-dabble. See, Candy let that slide last season. Now it's out there in the universe. People know it. I personally... I believe she she wanted to, to, to lick Porsche box. I believe she has licked... Phaedra's, and and I believe can't Phaedra done licked hers because like, that's what they was into, and I believe that she have now. If she offered to do Kim, I I don't know if she that down and dirty. I just not I um I don't know because you know Kim was gay there for a minute, so then again Candy may have. So you can't say. Kim lying because Candy would never touch Kim nasty ass. Y'all don't know Candy. And Kim ain't exactly nasty either. Kim ain't she don't get around like that. So she not you can't call her nasty. She don't get around as much as uh some of these other women on the show done got around. You know? 
they all equally done got around quite a bit. Kim just don't be hiding hers and like everybody else do. She just don't give a damn. That's I guess that's why I like her so much because she don't care. But anyway, it was still good to see her. She right hang out. I wondered if she cared. Croy a plate out there to the car because he may have been out there a little hungry. Because you know Croy was somewhere in Tokyo. Because I'm going to tell you that, that Croy ain't going to let nobody, nothing happen to his wife. He gonna he ain't about to let her be outnumbered and get jumped on either. And I don't blame him because my husband be right in tow too. Let me be going somewhere with a group of women, a group of anybody. I don't care if it's a group of kids and he think I'm about to get jumped. He going to be sitting right there. The only difference between Croy and my husband, my husband ain't about to sit in the car. He going to sit up in there bowl. He may sit at the bar or whatever, but he going to sit up in there bowling biggest day. He ain't about to stay in no car. He ain't even about to even play. Um... I'm glad that Kenya was there when Will came to her little school drive event thing. But this is what this is. Oh, Cindy don't have no good friends. First of all, when you, I, I, it's sketch to me to introduce a man to male. I feel like when you introduce a man to her own sister, her sister starts sizing them up for bait for herself. And that's the first thing she did was copped her a pose and tried to be cute with her pose. Mel did and started looking him up. And she started at his crotch and went up and down his feet and back up again. Cross sideways, scan him like she was doing a lifeguard scan down there at the swimming pool. That's, I don't trust her. And then, um, Kenya, do like she always do since she got her own man. She can't be up on nobody else's man. But the first thing she wanted to do, she knows Cynthia's a little bit of, a little, little naive and a little kooky coo. You know, like she's cute like that. Like she a little, you know, absent mind. I don't know what you call it, but it's easy to manipulate her mind. She going to put in her mind, you know, it's prostitute. She did that on purpose just so Kenya could, just so Cynthia would do what Cynthia was typically, typ typ y'all know what I'm saying. I can't get the word out. Typ typically do. <laughs> God, why can I not say that today? Anyway, and she, and Cynthia took it hook, line, and sinker. And, um, I was just annoyed because then can you going to, pull her to the side like she been the better friend and she she trying to show him how mature and lady like she is did y'all catch that see that's low shade kenya always low shading i seen it plain as day it was low shade that's what she did and and cynthia bless her heart was too blind to see it Mel wasn't paying no attention because she was too busy trying to look cute for somebody else man like she always do and ever since i read and in, in one of them magazines how she she the dude she was married to used to be married to one of her daughters i don't have no respect for her anyway did y'all read that if my mama married my ex we would have issues moving on so um they went on got through with the little event we'll ask her to step outside for me you know so they can they can talk in private, you know, so they can say they look goodbyes. You know, yeah, yeah. But um, I feel like Cynthia just gets so excited. It's why she acts the way she acts. She really feeling him. She really falling for him and she really like him. He He's still an opportunist. He playing her to the left. I'm just going to go on and be honest. Anyway, Cairo came in like a grown ass man with these with this big ass king king's king for uh charcoal and I uh was it me? And no, it wasn't me. Y'all know that she raced that boy down to the store for them groceries. She like he came in with her having to call and get get him her credit card and the grocery list. But it was still cute. He came on in and he knew how to grill them burgers up and for his little mom and they were so cute. And I like to see him. I'm I love seeing him on the show more and then do, doing more family and quality time together. But anyway, he came in, made them double bacon cheeseburgers, and they look good. Just leave the cheese off, man. I just need a double hamburger with some bacon. I put me a little tomato and some coleslaw on there, and then it'll be good for me. Um, They all went down here to this little seance with this lady. She's supposed to be a medium, honey. Number one, this lady was mean. Her aura was all bad and all wrong, honey. My dog wouldn't have went up in there and let that lady touch her. They'd have been like, huh? 
They'd been like, they been talking like Scooby Doo. That lady wasn't even no kind of nice. She wasn't like no median I ever seen. I see the long, what is, what is it, the Long Island media lady? Well, she kind of, she a little mean too. It? Maybe seeing all them spirits and dead people make you mean. I don't know, but she is a little mean, but she still ain't like this lady. This lady was kind of rude. I'm with Kim and Portia. I'm not going to put my phone in no basket. I'm in a group of women that's done tried to beat me up before. I might need to call 911 or they might need to summon Croy up in there to come save them. I'm not going to leave my phone in no basket. Get my butt kicked up in here with y'all savages. Not, nope. Not about to even happen. So anyway, they go on with this little media reading. The lady didn't tell us nothing we didn't already know. This stuff, she could have watched any season and said, I didn't find nothing intriguing about her. Nothing that would tell us that she really a median. Uh, nothing that reached out and said, I'm legit or nothing. And she was like the low island median, how, whatever her name is, we'd have been doing something. But no, this lady sounded like she was just, she like Tyrone and Will, some opportunities just trying to get somebody doggone money. Um, Kim need to stop being disrespectful. She over there all that mumbling, acting like she don't know how to act when she goes somewhere. At this point, that's old. I don't want to see it no more. I don't want to hear it no more because it's just done. I'm tired of her being just rude and disrespectful acting just like a ghetto redneck. I'm 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 sick of that behavior. She just shut her damn mouth cause, and act like somebody with some damn sense. It don't matter if you like it or not. Learn to be disrespectful. But then I need Kingy to shut up too. And she, she always try to act like she correct and not take the shots. But she over there giggling and sniggling trying to get it started and get it popping. So to me, she they both had negative energy. But Kim came in there negative out of way. Out, anyway, but I'm going to be honest with you. Miss Rose did better at reading people um, than this lady right here. They should have just went to Miss Rose because she could have helped them better than this lady. Because, honey, she couldn't even read with my, nothing about my dog's lifespan. And wasn't nobody trying to feel all of that. But um, Kim wasn't messing with the ladies. But she was being disrespectful to the media, and I didn't appreciate that. But anyway, Sheree and Nene. Nene took a shot. Sheree fired back, though. When she, Sheree is defending this man that's going to try to take up for Chateau Sheree and all of the little pennies she may have. This man, I feel like he ain't done Sheree. He did, you know how people go to prison, they need to make good with a woman and have a good woman on their side because they're going to need somebody to put some money on their books and need somebody to talk to and write and call and tell all their problems to and somebody on the outside that's intelligent to help them. I feel like that's what Tyrone is doing with Sheree. Plus, he's going to need somewhere to go when he get out and so I feel like he using her. I don't feel, you know, I won't know more until he get out. But if he in there for 10 years, we ain't going to never see him. So now to me, he just a storyline. I hope she found her a real, a real life boy <laughs> like Pinocchio. She need to find her a real life man that's going to really help her. Really, you know, because I'm ready to see her date somebody um, nice and somebody that's going to treat her right. She's so standoffish to me. So, uh, we'll have to see. But, um, Kim was right about telling Kim to shut up. What else was it? Oh, when Kim told Cynthia to kind of stay out of it, that she needed to hush her mouth, Cynthia really did need to hush her mouth. This is what argument uh, Cynthia didn't need to get in because she really didn't know everything that she was talking about, and she just needed to mind her business and go out. She needed to worry about Will cutting her and being so naive and dumb. Just sometimes you have to choose your battles, and this was a battle that Cynthia didn't need to be in. And, and, and see, my issue with Cynthia was when she got over here to the little reading thing, she going to try to act like she had an issue with Candy giving Will the fifth degree out here, the third degree out here on the little boat ride. She should have. I If it weren't for uh, Candy, you wouldn't have known that he was on another show. She needed to do that. So stop being so defensive 
and and wake up and stop being so naive. And I'm glad that Candy did be a friend to you and ask some questions that you obviously haven't asked because you're too busy being giddy in love. Cynthia, wear a heart on her sleeve. She need to cut that BS out too. Anyway. And then he asked Kim to stay back behind so they could talk what not or what have you. And because the lady started trying to get they arguing going back around. It's, and then same issues. Everybody br dragging them old stuff. Candy and Portia in a good place. Why even start this back over? Talking about elephants can live forever. And talking about elephants in the room. And in other words, I'm going to be mad at Portia forever. Candy, shut the F up. Go on. It's, what, what, what Portia did was horrible. I... I'm not even going to sit here and lie about that and say it one heart, one heart. Well, you have a right to not want to be friends with her, but, and you don't have to talk to her and be in her face or whatever, but y'all work together. So this is different. So I can't sit up here and say, girl, you can't talk to her. Don't talk to her no more. You can't say that because y'all have to have, y'all work together. Y'all have to have a working relationship. And since that's the situation, you need to keep doing like you've been doing. But all that just keep rebranding that shit up and go on. Cause you, you will be the dead horse to death to it, try to come back. So whatever. But then Kim did ask Nene. Nene did ask Kim um, to hang around or whatever so she could talk to her. I like that Kim said stuff directly to Nene's face. She did everything that she said about Nene behind her back. She came and said it to her face. Girl, was you on something? Was she taking some pills or something? Because you weren't acting your normal self. You was kind of like out there or whatever. And this is my thing with Nene. Nene didn't give two downs about Kim popping off at this part and breaking none of them damn dishes. She wasn't studying none of that stuff. This is what she do though when she want to pretend to be mad at somebody. She gonna bring up them dishes. And she wasn't even studying that. She just I, I hate when Nene do stuff like that. But anyway, um now I was feeling Nene until she told Kim she wasn't a supportive friend. This is the same thing she told Cynthia. It's the same thing she's told Portia. It's the same thing I think. I want to say she done told Candy that, uh, Kenya that before. Now you sit up here telling Kim that before. Nene's idea of a sensitive friend is jump when I say jump. Come when I say come. Walk behind me, carry my purse, pat my nose with some makeup. That's Nene's idea of being a sensitive friend. If that's the kind of friend Nene wants, she needs to get a a, a personal assistant to do all that shit for her. Because what a friend does is what they do. Like Portia said, I called it on your show for you. I, you know, see how you're doing. That's what a real friend does. Nene doesn't know the definition of a friend and I'm so tired of hearing they not a supportive friend. The kind of friend she's looking for is people that you pay to be on your staff. That You're not looking for a friend. You're looking for a servant there is a difference you don't want a lap dog friend that's that's what you want but you're not gonna get that not from these group of people the only way you're gonna get a friend like that is find a, a super fan somebody that's just a big fan of yours that's gonna walk behind you and wipe your behind and kiss it carry your purse for you and do whatever they say and agree with what you do kim and people have a right to their opinions and when you do people wrong but but the reason you don't have these friendships with people because you never acknowledge what you do wrong. You got all these people saying, "Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." Your apologies, I'm sorry for what you think I might say. Or I'm sorry. That's not a sincere apology. You never acknowledge. Look here, I said this, and I didn't mean it. Or I said it and I'm mad. Or I said it and I'm wrong. You never do that. You never acknowledge that. That's why people have issues with you. But you want to turn around and say, well, because you wasn't a good friend. It's old, it's done, whatever. Kim even said, they said, oh, I, and by the way, I apologize for um, the way I, uh, for acting ugly at your home, Nene. Um, and she apologized. But you don't never hear Nene saying, I'm sorry for them like that. It's always, I'm sorry if you think I upset you. I'm sorry if you think I did you wrong. I'm sorry if you think. It, that's not sincere. That's straight bullshit. And like Portia said, the same look Nene had on her face is the same look she had at the tea party. And Nene on the same stuff that she on that same BS. If, if you ain't praising her, she... Anyway... I ain't even finna get into it. Because if you want to hear hear about it, there go. It's in all my reviews. other reviews. Beauty reviews, vlogs, mukbangs, hauls, honey. 
That's why they call me all things nail, because your girl got it all, okay? <laughs> so, anyway, y'all come on through and see your girl. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. If you love unbiased opinions, honey. <laughs> and I will see y'all in the next review. Bye.